Hi, I'm Sayojita. Welcome to my kitchen. Today you're in for a royal treat. Shahi mutton kurma. This popular dish can trace its origins to the Mughal kitchens. Now you can make it in your own. If you're a chicken lover, you can use the same exact recipe to make shahi chicken kurma. It will take less time than the mutton. The long list of ingredients can be daunting. But not to worry. I'm here to uncomplicate it all for you. Let's get cracking. First of all, I thought I would just show you the ingredients. I'm not going to dwell on them too long. As with most Indian gravies, especially Mughlai ones, there are a lot of ingredients mainly because of the whole spices. I think the best way to follow along with the video is not to look at the specific spices in detail. As usual, the list is available in the description box. To make things easier, I have classified the ingredients in groups like whole spices, dry powders, seasonings, etc. And then the other ingredients. Cashew nuts, ghee, fresh cream, saffron infused milk and kevda water. Kevda water is the extract from the pandanus plant and it gives the kurma its characteristic flavor along with the mace and nutmeg. Another key ingredient of Mughlai gravy such as this one is birista or crispy fried onions. I'm not going to show you the preparation here. I have a detailed video on making birista without deep frying. I've already started the first step of the birista which is drying out the sliced onions in the microwave. And finally, we have the meat. I'm using mutton or goat meat. You can use lamb and in fact, you can follow the same recipe for chicken too. With that out of the way, now we can start cooking. The first step as usual is to heat the saucepan and add the ghee to infuse the flavor of the whole spices. Cinnamon, cloves, green and black cardamom, black pepper corns and bay leaves. Toss for about 30 seconds until you get the wonderful aroma of the spices. I like to take out the spices into a piece of muslin and make a small sachet or potli and add it to the meat later. This way you can get all the flavor of the spices without having to bite into a black cardamom for instance. I can tell you that's not the best experience. Now it's time to braise the meat. I'm going to add a couple more tablespoons of ghee. This gravy, like a lot of other Mughlai gravies, is quite rich. I usually add the minimum amount of ghee required to make a tasty gravy. Now we have to brown the mutton pieces. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes because this is a lot of meat. We will add the other seasonings along the way. I'm going to pressure cook the mutton. Traditionally, the mutton is simmered in a covered saucepan until soft and tender. This takes a long time, so I prefer to use a pressure cooker. I don't think it makes that much difference to the taste of the gravy. This time, I'm not going to cook directly in it. I will do most of the procedure in a saucepan and use a pressure cooker only to cook the meat. This is how you would do it if you have a pressure cooker that you cannot cook in directly or if you want to stack multiple items in it. Of course, you can use a pressure cooker all the way through or an instant pot. And if you're making chicken kurma, then the saucepan all the way. The meat has browned sufficiently. I'm going to add the garlic and ginger paste and the dry powders, coriander and cumin. I will add the chili powder, salt and garam masala later. Toss for about a minute to remove the rawness of the ginger and garlic. I had to change my turner. This one is much better. Tossing the mutton is so much easier. This is a good time to keep some water to boil. About a couple of cups. The mutton is brown all over and we can add the yogurt. Make sure it is whisked smooth. Add only a little at a time, about two to three tablespoons. Mix it in and then add the next batch. This way it will not curdle. And that's all of it.
Now we are about to enter the second phase which is cooking the meat. There are a couple of ingredients we need to add, the salt and a small amount of chili powder. The bulk of it I'm going to add later. I'm going to transfer the meat to another bowl which I will insert into my pressure cooker. Drop the sachet of whole spices and add the hot water. I've added one and a half cups. Here's my pressure cooker. I've added about three quarter cup of water at the base and placed the meat inside. When the pressure builds up or after the first whistle, as we say in India, lower the heat and cook for about 20 minutes. Let the pressure release naturally. We want the meat to be about 90% cooked after this. If you're cooking in the instant pot, you can pressure cook the meat for 20 minutes or slow cook it for about 45. If you're cooking chicken or slow cooking the mutton, you will continue as is. Bring to a boil, cover the pot and simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes for the chicken and 45 to 50 minutes for the mutton. We have about 45 minutes while the mutton is cooking. In the meanwhile, there are a couple of miscellaneous tasks that need to be done. First, the birista. I'm going to use ghee to pan fry it. It will take about 15 minutes to do this. In this recipe, the birista is crushed and used as a gravy base for its flavor, color and body. We can therefore sacrifice its crispness somewhat. Refer to the video to understand the whole process. You can also make birista ahead of time. While this is going on, I'm just going to lightly roast the second batch of whole spices, the nutmeg and mace. The birista is ready and cooled sufficiently to make a paste. Process it without adding any water, as fine as possible. It will not be totally smooth, but that's fine. The rest of it will break down by the time we are done. The paste has a deep, rich color and flavor of the caramelized onion. Now the second paste of cashew, nutmeg and mace with water. Make this one smooth. We do not want to feel bits of cashew or nutmeg in the finished product. This gravy is quite smooth. Here are the items we still have to add. The chili powders, garam masala, the kevda water, the saffron infused milk. As for the ghee, I'm not going to add any more. Though I've removed some of the ghee from the birista, there is some in there and that's plenty. Cream is a key ingredient in shahi kurma. It is mixed into the gravy. But I'm going to show you a lighter option and just drizzle a little bit on while serving. Mutton is quite rich and heavy, so I think the cream is not necessary. But if you like to be authentic, do go ahead. Time for a small break. The mutton is just about ready to come out of the pressure cooker. I finished all my miscellaneous tasks, but we have a few minutes to go. So please do take a moment to hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel so I can get you more such content. I'll see you in the kitchen shortly. The mutton is ready to come out of the cooker. I'm now going to divide this mutton into two portions. A small one, about one fifth, which I'm going to make mild, and the remaining I'm going to make spicy, as the recipe requires. I don't know about you, but I find myself doing this quite often, because some of my friends and family cannot handle too much spice. Instead of cooking separately in, in two different pots from the get-go, I work most of the process in one pot and then divide the two dishes. The mutton is nicely done. We still have to do the final slow cooking of about 10 minutes, which is why we want the mutton to be 90% cooked at this point. Otherwise, it will be falling off the bone by the time we are done. We want the mutton to be soft and tender, but still want the pieces to hold. Likewise with the chicken. Take out the sachet of spices and squeeze out all the juices. Discard the spices and the bay leaves too. I'm going to add the remaining items to both the pots. The birista paste, 
the cashew paste, the garam masala, the chili powder, both hot and mild Kashmiri. Much more in the big pot, of course. Uh, and the kevda water. This is a good time to taste the seasonings, mainly the salt. I need a little more. Right now, if you look at the gravy, you can see little bits of barista. They will all disappear and you will have a smooth gravy shortly. Cover the pot and simmer until the mutton is cooked. Last of all, add the saffron infused milk. You can use the slow cook mode in the instant pot for this step. And if you're not serving right away, the keep warm mode. I've turned off the gas. Shahi mutton kurma is all done. The gravy has reduced nicely and there's no trace of the barista. Just a smooth, rich, dark gravy. Let it rest covered for at least 5 minutes before serving. Here is the little pot. It looks and smells much like the main pot. Brown and delicious. Yummy! This here is Shahi Chicken Kurma. Be on the lookout for the shorts video of this dropping in a couple of days. Shahi Mutton Kurma is all ready. I'm going to serve it with my simple white pulao and bindi raita. It also tastes great with paratha and some salad. Next, you can check out this mutton robin josh video. It is another iconic traditional Indian gravy, simplified for you by yours truly. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.